Hello everyone and thank you for watching another video on qualitative and quantitative analysis of pharmaceutical excipients. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about isopropyl meristate. And it is, this uh, slideshow is useful for people who are doing reverse engineering of uh, pharmaceutical products or cosmetic products. Isopropyl meristate is a synthetic oil which means it doesn't exist in nature, it doesn't produce by animals or plants. And it is a reaction of uh, meristic acid with isopropyl alcohol. So the molecule is an ester. And this excipient is used in the semi-solids, especially creams, in cosmetic and, pharma uh, and uh, pharmaceutical products. The IID FDA database mentioned isopropyl meristate for topical transdermal or vaginal products. Uh, for topical, there are 12 entries uh, for dosage forms such as creams, gel, lotion, ointment, and spray. Transdermal, they mentioned film and gel, and vaginal is a cream and suppositories. Uh, for the topicals, the allowable limit in formulation we have as low as 5% in lotion up to 35% in ointment. Uh, in transdermal we have 1% uh, weight per weight in gel and in uh, vaginal products we have 1% for cream and 0 0.01 milligram per day in case of suppository. So again for people who are doing reverse engineering depending on the dosage form they are working on they have to know these limits. For qualitative and quantitative analysis, I would like to talk about GC only. Also, I would briefly talk about potential of uh, using HPLC RI or UV or even ELST for the quantitation. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to mention that the isopropyl meristate is a companion excipient. Uh, it has a monograph in USP. And in the USP, there is an assay method uh, for potency determination of isopropyl meristate. First of all, these methods are meant for raw material testing, and they are not uh, for, uh, uh, let's say, determination of the excipient in a finished product, although you could use them with some modification. In this particular uh, GC method by USP, uh, the method uses uh, the packed column with the five microliter injections. Uh, people who do GC, they know that the packed columns are not used very often. And I would consider this method is kind of like old or even obsolete. And uh, all the GC methods currently are using capillary column. So I will show you a chromatogram that is generated by a capillary call. This is a GC chromatogram of a finished product containing isopropyl meristate and the peak of IPM is shown at uh, 12.6 minute. Uh, the column is a DB624 and solvent is IPA. And you also need to have an internal standard, which I recommend fatty alcohol, any, any fatty alcohol, as long as it doesn't interfere, uh, or the other peak in the formulation does not interfere with internal standard. For sample solvent, I recommend IPA, because if you use methanol, uh, possibly uh, during sample preparation, when you apply heat, the, the met methanol will replace your IPA in isopropyl meristate, so you will generate some uh, methyl meristate, let's say. Or if you use ethanol, you will end up having some ethyl meristate. So in order to not having uh, the, the loss of IPM, I highly recommend to use IPM as your sample solvent. The USP method was using uh, hexane and, uh, or heptane as a sample solvent. You could use it, it uh, but it depends on your formulation. 
uh, for a formation with a lot of water, or if you use heptate, then you, you may end up having a low recovery or not, uh, or not the desired recovery. So this GC method is always work and is very robust. As I said, no, I'm just going to briefly talk about the UH plus RI or UV. I, I here mention under development means that I haven't have any condition developed yet. Reason being is that the GC method is so reliable that I never had any uh, need to develop any other method than GC. So if you have GC and you have a capillary column, I highly recommend using that method. Now, if in the, in, the, in the case that you don't have GC, then that's a different story. Then your choice would be HPLC with RI, UV, or e ELST. Uh, I would say the method development would be relatively easy task for you. Mm, I recommend using C18 with water acetonitrile for both UV or ELST. RI, for sure, you need to have uh, isocratic and you need to just do your de method development to get the right conditions. Um, usually at the end of each slideshow, I would say uh, references that there are too many to mention, but surprisingly, there are not too many references for isopropyl metastate Q and Q. And I was surprised. I mean, it's, it is such a simple molecule and uh, molecule to do an analytical method on it but there are not too many uh, references mentioning this IPM. Uh, the other best reference I would say a USB NF monograph. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great time.